A quaint little group of Norwegian and European and Egyptian gentlemen here this afternoon for a Norwegian, what the fuck do we call it? Four-week natural free tour. I'm Alex, you all know me from the internet. You know me a little bit from a conversation we had before we started. And today I'm really glad to join you here in Norway because in uh, 10 days I'm going to be starting the Norwegian, uh, the Oslo four-week natural. I feel very much at home here in Oslo and I plan to be doing the four-week natural in Oslo uh, probably in July. Uh, over the next four years, okay? That's my, my five-year plan, right? Um, and some of the guys in the room here are doing the four-week natural. Uh, if you guys don't know anything about it, you can ask me a little bit after this presentation. But I like to come here, make myself known, make myself available for those who want to sign up for the one time of the year that I'm here. For the record, I'm the most experienced pickup coach on the planet. This is all that I've done all of my life, except for the last 18 months. <clears throat> I took some time off. I learned about business, photography. Uh, I traveled a whole lot. I bought an electric skateboard, which was fun. And I slept with a lot of girls. I learned photography so that I could get more girls. But what was really important was that with Four Week Natural, I bought on my coaches so that I could go to their programs and learn about the process of my program from the top down so that I could watch what my coaches were doing, think what's the best way to optimize this program, implement it, practice it, trial and error, observe how my German, British and Australian coaches did things differently uh, and then get, learn something from them. And then now here I am committed to this for at least 2024 at this point. Did you work with Ryan, my, my coach Ryan? You didn't. There's a guy with exactly the same name, looks similar to you. Yeah, anyway, cool. So, <clears throat> what I want to speak to you about today, right? I'm releasing a program in the future. It's going to be called uh, Mastermind, right? It's going to be a whole lot of new modules about some of my most high consciousness ideas. So, what I'm going to share with you today, and I can get eye contact. I can get eye contact from almost everybody in the room. <clears throat> and, of course, this is going to go out on YouTube. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, fever. A concept is called a concept called inverted motivation. Inverted motivation, which is stronger than motivation. Inverted motivation is stronger than direct motivation. Now, <clears throat> here we are. We're in a seminar about men, how to pick up girls, how to seduce women, how to get results with chicks. What you're interested in, if you're watching this at home or if you're in this classroom, is how do I get more girls? Right? That's why I know that's what you're interested in. That's the goal. That's the thinking. That's fine. Um, and women out there, of course, they like, to, they like to be with men. Sure. Right? But there's a whole lot of blocking factors that are preventing it from happening. We'd all like to have more abundance with women, and women would like to have a great time with men. Sure. I would like to talk about how to bring that together a little bit more. <sighs> I've never spoken about this before, so I'm just going to basically <clears throat> constipatedly spit it out as the best of my ability. You guys are going to quality check me. You're going to question me. I'm going to delve into it. And I'm going to talk about it from all the different angles that are relevant in the equation. So, inversion and motivation. Motivation is that you want to achieve something. You want to get the girl, right? Inverted is wanting to get the girl for different reasons, right? But even then, I'm referring to this from your side. From the girl's point of view, she suffers from or is more inclined to be invertedly motivated than men are. So women, girls, or even beta males, I'd say like kind of the same school of kettle of fish, are invertedly motivated. They don't go for what they want. They avoid what they don't want. All right, here's the, here's the top-down definition. Inverted motivation is not going for what you want or not just pursuing what would be good for you or what you could have or trying to live your best life. It's more about avoiding pain or acting out of fear of loss or remaining defensive but still wanting to not be left out, right? We're starting to throw some ideas on the table here. And what I realized, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of skip between a girl's interpretation of this and a man's interpretation of this. What I realized is that women, they really only act on intimacy Never say never, of course. They really only act on intimacy when they're invertedly motivated rather than motivated. For example, <clears throat> all right, we, we open the can of worms now. <clears throat> I look at some of the guys in the room here, some of the guys on the internet back at home, and you might go to the gym, you might be making good money, you might be 
classy, cultured, well-dressed, have a nice apartment, you might be making you know, money in your pocket, good looking, good game, lots of experience, slept with 100 women, right? You know what you're doing. But a woman is not motivated by you, right? She's not going to be like, oh, there, there's a guy with all these amazing socially conditioned positive traits, I want to sleep with him, right? Sober. Of course, never say never. Out there in the world, there's kind of like this 80-20 rule of 20% girls who are clear of mind, who they see a quality man, who they know through their social circle. They think he's got the right stats. He's a good guy. I want to go for him. I'm going to make myself available to him. Sure, that happens. But the majority of human beings are fucking backwards. We're all backwards, right? Especially people under social pressure. And women do tend to feel social pressure more. Okay, trying to remain non-misogynistic in my description here. The question in bringing this up, you guys want to get more girls. So if you're, acting, if you're interacting with somebody who's not motivated by you, but she's motivated by the reverse of you, the inverse of you, you're pretty much fucked, right? How are you going to get a girl if the girl's not motivated by you as a fact? if most of them are motivated by negative factors. That's what you're working with here. You, I, he, here you are, like on a fucking Wednesday night, you could be at home watching Love Island or Paradise Bachelor or whatever. What is it in Sweden? Love Hotel? Paradise, Paradise Hotel. Paradise, yeah, you all know. You could be at home watching Paradise Hotel. But here you are, good guys, learning how to be better socially. You go to the gym, you make your fucking money, you travel the world. You love women, you respect women, and you would think, you would think that a woman would want you for that, but she doesn't. She doesn't. That's not how it works, right? And if you can get that through your head, then you'll actually be liberated and be able to play the game so much better. So, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> From, do you remember, remember, okay, now I'm talking to you guys. Remember that if you want to get girls, remember that human beings, when they're met with unknown stimulus, a guy doing cold approach, what I'm, what I'm seminaring you on here now, what this whole channel is about, if you cold approach somebody, people respond with two reactions, fight or flight. What do 90% of the girls do? Flight, right? You meet, you meet them in day game, you meet them in a bar, you meet them at a party, that first conversation, uh, the girl is going to have a, usually a flight reaction unless she's drunk or she identifies with confidence or, you know, whatever fucking reason. So if you're constantly dealing with somebody who's, you know, by nature evasive, and remember the human beings love to stay in their comfort zone and they fucking hate to go out of their comfort zone. If they're drunk, if they're at a party, if they're psychologically prepared for it, sometimes they do, but for the most part, they want to stay in the comfort zone. So here's all these things that are against you. Even if you, I said, like you get the abs, you get the money, you get the game, you get the apartment, these are not motivating factors. And right now, hopefully I'm kind of putting like a, a dampening emotion on you glass half empty, but I'm going to convert this into glass half full a little bit later on. So, <clears throat> if, if you, I'll go in, I'll skip back now to the girl's point of view, the girl's point of view. The way that a girl navigates her dating life and the bar, the club, and you guys approaching her is basically, she's not motivated to go, first of all, not motivated to go to a bar because she likes the bar. She's not going to the bar because she wants to meet you guys. She's not going to the bar because she wants to be invited to get a drink on a table kind of thing, table service, right? Mostly, the, girl is, the girls are motivated by not being at home alone left out on a Friday night. They don't want to be bored. That's the primary motivation. So it's not that they want to be the direct motivation at the bar. They don't want to be left out at home. Another thing is, let, let's bring it back to even more raw, a more raw and all like emotional hard truth. Most people are so unhappy with where they are in life, their body, their finances, their education, their dating life, whatever. They live in perpetual denial, which usually is alcohol or blind spotting, right? They just, especially, you know, the, some, some girls, right? <clears throat> Socially, they'll drink or they'll, they'll blind spot themselves and like, yeah, I look cute even though I'm out of shape or I'm dressed in a horrible way or I'm really sassy and confident even though they're not really that confident on the inside. So instead of them actually being confident, it's all an overcompensation rather than them being simple and high, I am enough as a girl. It's like, fuck, I'm not enough. 
Therefore, I'm going to do things in a backward sense and overcompensate and act hyper sassy, hyper aggressive, uh, hyper, yeah. almost like a playgirl kind of thing, almost hyper social. But that's not really how the girl is when she wakes up at home on Christmas Day with her family. You know, she's going to be far more, far more, you know, easygoing, relaxed, open-minded, that kind of thing. So <clears throat> people don't really, are not motivated to behave themselves. They're motivated to behave the opposite of themselves as an overcompensation for a lack of self, right? This is especially true with, with girls in social situations. Whereas I see in the pickup industry, some guys are getting closer to the idea that there's no reason you're not enough, that you can be yourself, be calm, form a connection, form familiarity, and then try to leave together and create uh, compliance and rapport, stuff like that. <clears throat> so realize that from the top down, girls, they're not motivated by socializing, they're not motivated by men, they're motivated by not being ignored by men. They're motivated by not being left out. They're not motivated by looking beautiful for men. Then they're motivated by not feeling ugly, right? Right? This is what you're trying to approach. You're trying to approach a girl who doesn't care about impressing men, doesn't care about joining in the party, doesn't care about you. She just is basically wants to not stop treading water. She's basically treading water. She doesn't want to go under, right? You guys are thinking, a lot of men, high achievers in these kind of industries, you're thinking, I want to fly. I want to have the car, the apartment, the house, the job, the friends, the girls. That's very overconfident thinking. But for other human beings out there who are not high achievers, they're thinking, fuck, I can't achieve the job, the education, the body. I fucking give up. I'm going to blind spot it. I'm going to get a little bit drunk and tipsy and just try to fucking survive my way through life, just tr keeping my head above water. That's who you're dealing with. That's who you're trying to get, right? You made that clear in your brain, right? That's, I just want to kind of relate it. This is a fucking a bramble bush of complicated concepts connecting men and women here. Right. So we're laying it all, laying it all out. So in a very traditional sense, <clears throat> I always think of, you know, here we are in Norway. You know, uh, Frozen, have you all seen Frozen? With your niece or nephew or something? Yeah, with my niece. Has anybody not seen Frozen? <laughs> okay, actually half the room is not seen Frozen. You guys should just stay in touch with pop culture. All right, it's about Norwegian princesses and like a Danish prince, actually. So what you're thinking, the socially conditioned way of thinking is, hello, here I am. Here are my attributes. Here is my heritage. Here is my wealth. Choose me. Girl's not motivated by that. Right? These things are good. It kind of gives her permission to relax and enjoy you. But this is not going to make her think, fuck, I would love to sleep with that guy. Right? It's not going to, it's not going to make, it's not going to light the fire under her ass to send that text, invite herself over, put herself next to you in a social situation. That doesn't do it. You know, how many times do we hear girls say, I don't like guys with abs. I like a dad bod. I, money, money doesn't do anything for me. That guy thinks he's so cool. That guy's arrogant. They always say this kind of stuff. You're not appealing to the invertedly motivated by being something that somebody would be motivated by. You get that? You're not appealing to the, those who are not motivated by being something somebody should be motivated by. And it drives me fucking nuts. I mean, I was <clears throat> running along the river here just a moment ago and I see these like uh, decrepit looking dudes spray painting, being artistic, sitting in the fucking dirt on a Wednesday afternoon. They look homeless with really cute girls sitting around them with a bit of music, a couple of drinks and smoking cigarettes. And here are these guys who are the opposite of social conditioning. They're in the fucking dirt. They probably have no money. They they're <clears throat> look decrepit uh, and they're spray painting. I can't assume anything about them. But this starts to reveal the trigger that you're probably missing being a high achieving thinker and a, a, a student of game, right? <clears throat> Let me try to relate it from my point of view now, right? I'm skipping back to me. When I look at a girl and I know that she's invertedly motivated, invertedly motivated, uh, this is bro science that I'm like coining here for the first time ever. I look at a girl and I know that she's not interested in me. She's not interested in getting laid. She's not interested in being validated. She's only interested in surviving the social situation. She's interested in not 
being confronted or under pressure to be fucked. She, I know that she uh, wants to look like she knows what she's doing. And the inverted motivation of that is she wants to, she doesn't want to look like she doesn't know what she's doing. You're following me here? There's like all these fucking double negatives. The girl, I'm talking to a girl, and she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to seem cool. She wants to look like she doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't not know what she's doing. I remember I've had so many first dates with girls and they sit there, they're really quiet. They don't know what's going on. And then I'll start dating them. And a month later, and I asked the girl, like, what was it like on our first date? And she's like, I just really didn't want to fuck up. Like, but you're great. You're great. You're beautiful. I still, I'm still here with you like three months later. She's like, I just really didn't want to fuck up. I didn't want to, I really hoped you wouldn't not like me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, that's where the motivation, that's where the motivation goes. So how do, you, how do you connect with that? You're at a bar or you're on a date or you're at a party, you're on Tinder date. You now need to systematically alleviate the inverted motivations, right? I know English is your second and third language here. Even for me, this is like kind of complicated. The people on the internet who are fucking geeks, especially lawyers, are going to love this shit, the Americans. <clears throat> so... The basic message that I want to give the girl, both verbally and to demonstrate it on, uh, through my body, through my interaction, I look at the girl and I'm thinking, I say, like, uh, I meet the girl and here she is not wanting to fuck up, not wanting to feel unincluded uh, and not wanting to, you know, seem silly so she overcompensates being sassy. I want to set up an interaction where the girl feels like there's, she doesn't have to motivate. She doesn't have to be good. That there is no pressure. I want to set up an interaction where there is no fucking pressure. That she doesn't have to live up to what society says she should do. To be sassy, clever, beautiful, edgy, flirty or whatever, right? So I, when I'm with the girl... We're actually bringing it back to the Trinity now. We're bringing it back to the Trinity. These are the three things that actually turn the interaction on. There's a whole nother seminar in the upcoming Mastermind. In the interaction, I want to encourage her, sexualize with her, and uh, troll her. But the overarching message, right, the overarching message is that while you're with me, chick, next to me at the bar, next to me in line, next to me at a party, while you're with me, you can do no wrong. That's the fucking commu- that's what you want to communicate. You can do no wrong. And instead of me rolling up like some dude from Game of Thrones, hello, I am Alex, first of my name, hero from Australia, driver of vans, ha- handler of Hasselblads, fingerer of many. Choose me. Be motivated. <laughs> anyway, hi. There's nothing to me. And I feel like when I'm hanging out with you, I just don't have to worry. And I feel like for you, you're so cool, you can do no wrong. In my book, you can do no wrong. I, I don't even know you, but you can do no wrong. Like, like yeah, that's the message. Now, how do I deliver that? Now, so how, how's the girl going to interpret that? The girl's going to interpret that like, shit, this guy isn't trying to game me. This guy isn't judging me. He's not judging me. He's not evaluating me. He's not like seeing how hot I am. He's not trying to impress his friends with me. Most guys would be trying to impress their friends. They're motivated by impressing their friends, right? Um, <clears throat> she, I, I also will allow, like I, I want to encourage her to make mistakes with what she says, how she dances, how she acts, what she drinks, all the guys she talks to. So I'll say a couple of things like, and I mean this, I, tr- I truly mean this. I'm like, you're, you're so fucking sassy, you can talk to anyone and it doesn't matter. You can talk to everybody and it doesn't matter. I'm like, oh my God, you, dan- you actually dance like nobody's watching, but you get it right. This kind of expression. I'll say, like, you're a drunk, but you do it so well. So I'm just nullifying all of these concerns, the inverted motivation. She doesn't want to feel left out. She, do- she wants to not look stupid. She wants to not look not feel judged. She wants to not feel like she can't keep up in the conversation. So I'm saying these things like, when I talk to you, I can just relax and take it so fucking easy. I love it. When I'm with you, I know that we can drink whatever the fuck we want and it doesn't matter. So instead of me bringing my A game, I'm nullifying all these things so that underneath that, underneath that, when we're both switched off both of our motivations, 
trying to be impressive, trying to make an impression, trying to game one another. It's a whole different flipped thing. It's an inverted thing where everything is wide open and, and you're so much different to every other guy that she speaks to that all of a sudden she's like, oh, this guy, I don't need to please. I don't need to be super clever. I don't need to be so fucking beautiful. And guess what? When, her, when the pressure is off her, when she's not trying to live up to what she's trying to think she's trying to achieve, when all that pressure's off, she's funnier and more beautiful and more sexual and more forward and all that stuff, right? So that, <clears throat> that is what is going on. Now, a couple of key things, a couple of key things that you must do in the interactions to trigger that and get it right. So <clears throat> you might hear a lot of pickup people on the internet say, be dur, be retarded, be fucking crazy, self-amuse, right? These things are not precisely accurate. They're, they're quite accurate, but they don't coach as much as me in field, right? Instead, you want to act a little bit goofy to nullify the expectations in the interaction. So when you go and speak to a girl, you might go up there and you're like, hi, nice to meet you. you fucking, yeah, you're crazy. So just by doing something crazy with your hips or be like, do you want me to lick you? Blah. Or do you want me to, like, do, should we get married? I want to just tell my dad that I'm not gay. If we have sex and tell my dad I'm not gay, then we can be together forever. Can we buy each other drinks? She's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't expect anything here. You're not going to sleep with me ever. So life's good, right? And she's like, oh, she'll instantly categorize you as, as the, she doesn't have to live up to expectations with you. I guess living up to expectations <clears throat> is the enemy for the girl. If you can go the other way around, that there's no expectations, then she can open up on all levels. She can open up that emotional path of communication in her mind, in her emotions, and then physically she can connect. <clears throat> so <clears throat> when that's the case, imagine you're meeting a girl at the bar at fucking Horgan's, good old Horgan's. You bump into her at the bar, you tell her that she's crazy, she's trouble, I, don't, I feel like I don't need to impress you. Uh, I mean, I think it's really cool the way you can speak to everybody that you can drink with class. Fucking awesome. You're, a vet, you're the kind of guy who says, don't let me stop you. You go, you drink, you dance, you flirt, you steal that cigarette, you get that guy to buy you a drink. You're fucking, you're on fire, lady. Well done. And she's going to look at you as like, oh, that's my safe place. This is my safe place, right? And if you are the safe place, hold out on the safe place. Be the safe place. Be a place where she can be emotionally open, maybe later physically open. So when, when it, as, the pro, as the night goes on and as you get to know one another better, the connection and the interaction will enrich and will get richer and richer, back and forth, more physicality. And it happens quite organically when the pressure's off, right? As the night goes on, dance, like if you dance near her to allow, to, to kind of make other guys avoid coming over, if you're just dancing together, relaxing with the girl, uh, almost like a guard, so she can dance, be sexy. It's called Sexy Girl Dance Time, if you know my, my content. Uh, and just by you dancing near her, without trying to escalate and get the girl on the dance floor, you'll defend against other guys, other guys trying to come up and dance on her, right? You get that? So you're not trying to escalate on the dance floor. You're just enjoying the process, admiring her, enjoying the night, including other people, because you've kind of got a position of authority. And then, you know, the club's got to close here, two, three, four o'clock, whatever it's going to be. Float out of the front door rule for the guys doing the program. We've got a couple in the room here. The front door rule is one of the four big curriculums. Um, your, your front door rule, and if you're the guy who walks her down the street home or taxi, Uber, whatever, you play the role of deterring other guys coming up and grabbing at her and trying to get her. So it's not that she's leaving the club with you because she loves you. She's leaving the club with you because, eh, didn't have anything else to do. Eh, wasn't speaking to anybody else. But it works. The, 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 the fucking point is, it's working. You're with the girl. You're pulling. And not only are you pulling, which is a positive, it's like, a, it's like a, an aggressive connotation, pulling. I'm pulling her home. Rather than that, you're floating. It's like, uh, eh, not with anyone else, not hanging out with anyone else. I don't have any issues with you. You don't have any issues with me as opposed to, oh, my God, I love you. Oh, my God, I love you. You walk, you know, towards the taxi, towards the Uber, towards getting food, a pizza, kebab, whatever. And then she's like, all of a sudden, 
all of a sudden she'll realize, fuck, fuck, this is, I like this guy. This is cool. I'm, th this guy is making quite an impression without trying to make an impression, right? So during that time, you know, you might be trolling her a little bit, encouraging her a lot, whatever the fuck she wants to do, encourage her, steal that drink, get that fucking cigarette, do that fucking dance, go and show down with that other bitch chick over there who's your arch nemesis. Encourage her, compliment her, and then say, fuck, you're stupid, fuck, you're crazy, fuck, you're insane. Someone's going to take that out of fucking context on the internet, aren't they? <laughs> <coughs> that's, that's trolling. That's the trinity, by the way. That's the kind of things that you do to spark the interaction. And then when it, when it comes to actually going home, you, you're doing an interaction where there's no defensiveness. The interaction should have no defensiveness. So it's not like, hey, I want to take this guy home. It's like, ah, eh, it just happened. We were all just hanging out. And then when you're in the home space, when you're back at the apartment or the house or whatever, what a, what a Scandinavian girl's ABBA, give me a man after midnight in, uh, in Croatia. We just came from Croatia for Week Natural. These guys, my, my men, were pulling fucking threesomes just because they asked the DJ to play Man After Midnight. <laughs> Do you want me to request a song for you? They're like, I know which song. Ah, and don't, tell, don't tell me. I'll go and play it. Man After Midnight. The girl's like, how did you know? It's just a Croatia thing. These guys were getting laid so much at the end. Their fucking stories were insane. They were getting like makeouts during day game. Uh, pulling girls from day game, ridiculous. Well done, Croatian boys. Croatian program boys from all over the world, Swedish, Dutch, Irish, British, and Polish. Good lads, a lot of you, well done. <clears throat> and, then, and then, yeah, so that's what, you know, when you get back to the house, the girl's like, fuck, I've got this man to myself. I've had no defensive vibes towards this guy the entire time. He's, he is a quality guy. On paper, he's great. He's caused me no defensiveness. And remember, like, in, when the girl's thinking about intimacy... When the girl's thinking about intimacy, when the girl, she's not, we are not, as human beings, we are not allowed to or supposed to indulge guilty pleasures. Gambling, drinking, sex, uh, what are other guilty pleasures? Chocolate, diet, pizza, masturbating. We're not supposed to indulge guilty, satisfying pleasures. We're not supposed to, right? So if you present yourself as a guilty pleasure that she should be motivated by, ba -bow, that's not going to fucking work. But if you happen to be there at the right time of the night, it's not a guilty pleasure. It's just a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. So that's what it's called being smooth. Right? You're being smooth. You're creating a coincidence rather than trying to force the pull or whatever. Right? And this is really good as well because it does, it is, in, it is in congruence with the idea of compliance, agreement, uh, and not forcing anything. You're creating a situation where things can happen, not by forcing anything, but being very easygoing, maybe you could say patient. But the moral of the story here is that you would actually, you would actually uh, <clears throat> create a situation where the girl can have you if she wants, but you don't actually pull the trigger or put her under any pressure. If she gives you the green light touches your arm, goes to make out with you, by all means, show her passion, but, you know, know when to stop. So remember that girls are not motivated by lots and lots of dick. They might talk that way. They might love sex or whatever. They're not motivated by your dick. They just don't want a long, a long dry spell of not getting laid. So we're going to bring it back now to you guys. Girls, looking at, I'm looking at Mr. Blue Shirt in the back here. Half of the back of your head is probably in the camera. And <clears throat> this is where it comes back to your motivation and your liberation. And liberation is freedom of expression, freedom of will, freedom of confidence in the bar. You're talking to a girl in a bar, you're following my kind of process that I'm talking about. And maybe you've got some self-respect, you go to the gym, you save your money, you're getting an apartment, you've got a 10-year you've plan to be a millionaire in Kruna, Krona, Kruna. In Croatia, it's kuna or peso. Kuna, krona, kuna. Um, and she looks at you, and this is where it gets even deeper, even deeper on a whole other level. In the party, cold approach, pickup level. She looks at you, you're there, you're single, she's single, she's not on a period, she hasn't got laid for a little while. Her friends are starting to say, what's it, fucking Marlin? Marlin, you're being, you're being so frigid, you know, you're... You never get laid. Are guys like not attracted to you? 
she's not motivated by you or you or you. She's motivated by not, not getting laid. She's motivated by not having a dry spell. She's motivated by, I don't want to not have sex again tonight. I don't want to go home alone. That's the trigger. So you're talking to a girl and don't, don't even have it in your head that, hey, I'm a great guy, come with me. If you have it in your head, probably you don't want to go home alone tonight. She's like, yep, you're right. They're like, cool, well, I'm a nice guy. I know, you're not gonna, I know you're not motivated by me. I know you're not motivated by falling in love. I know that you're not allowed to be motivated by the guilty pleasure of sex with me. But if it just happens to happen because, you know, you can't sign off on indulging a guilty pleasure or even uh, girls also don't want to give the guy the satisfaction. It's not like, hey, you're such a fucking legend. I want to fuck you to make you feel good. It's like, I'm doing this for me. It's a one night stand for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Norway, Scandinavia. It's a great place. The girls sleep around a whole lot. Not because they like you. You're just a piece of fucking meat. But, you know, you're starting to fulfill. What? <laughs> it's like your mind is blown. Your pencil is fucking broke. Whoa. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> now let's take it a, a deeper level. People, girls are, girls are most motivated by one thing in life. Right? I don't know if you know this, but I'll, I'll quiz the audience. What are women more motivated by anything? By they're more motivated by one thing than anything else. What do you think? Value. Not relationship, love, intimacy. Okay. What he what he just said. Speaking to the, the microphone here. Student said uh, relationships, love, and intimacy. Now, what is the what is the name of this seminar? Inverted motivation. Yeah, risk avoidance. Yeah. That's it. Right? Risk avoidant. The women are most motivated by the number one thing in life is not having their heart broken, not feeling stupid at the expense of a guy. They're most motivated by not being lonely. And us, us human beings, us human beings are very motivated by those things as well. I'm going to say in this room right now, are you guys more motivated by uh, understanding the, the psychology of game? Are you, are you more motivated by understanding the psychology of game and the juicy dynamics and empowering yourself with knowledge? Or are you more motivated by not having your dating life handled? Who, okay, a little show of hands. Who's here because they're frustrated their dating life is not handled? 90%. Who here is motivated by the psychology? Yeah, but you're motivated by both. Yeah. Now, let me, let me say something right now. None of you in this fucking room are motivated by women are you that wasn't a, an, even an option the problem is you're not even motivated by the girls out there on the fucking street the only reason you're approaching them is to prove to yourself that you're not lonely prove to yourself that you're not not getting laid prove to yourself that y you're making progress in the game you fuckers yeah. you idiots you're supposed to fucking be interested in the fucking girl right on four week natural on four week natural in in between weeks two and three <clears throat> on week one, it's a honeymoon phase where you learn, you learn a lot about the process um, and you're very, usually very positive and enthusiastic, good at executing what I say. Say this, do that, escalate this, do this maneuver, whatever. But that's very much for you to learn your own dynamics and for you to feel empowered. But by weeks two and three, I run you through a whole shitload of drills that teach you how to shift your focus and consciousness from yourself outside of yourself toward the person in front of you. Statements of motivation, learning things from the girl, acknowledging three steps deep into what she speaks about. I'll run you through all the drills on the program, obviously. But it's really, really important. If you have the skill, if you're one of the rare guys who can be motivated by the human being in front of you, rather than being a guy who's motivated by not being lonely, truly, if you can look at a girl and say, hey, I'm a guy, like imagine you're a weak guy with no money, no looks, no car, no apartment, living in your fucking parents' basement, and you're the one little dweeb who really believes in the girl in front of him. You're like, fuck, you're, you're really cool. You're actually really beautiful. I really fucking admire you. I don't think I'm ever going to get you, but I'm allowed to admire you. And she will fucking latch onto you because she knows that when she's around you, she's going to get all those really lovely motivations. You call it validation, you call it positive energy, whatever. Guess what? If you're a leader and you believe in a girl who is in a subordinate role in your life, not 
inferior, but subordinate because you're older, more mature, more experienced, whatever. <clears throat> Imagine, like, just to make it clear, as a man, oftentimes we are more unstifled and stupider than women. Men are more dumb than women emotionally. So we can take more risks and fuck up more, but more risks creates more wins and losses, creates more progress. Women are more stifled, more at the mercy of what other women say and think and about them, especially what other men think about them. So they're more stifled, can't take as many risks, can't make as much wins, losses, and progress. So that's kind of like the summary of it. Our stupidity helps us make progress because we can endure negative outcomes better, right, uh, than what women can. So imagine you're an authority in context. You're a man with a job, with abs, with drive, with passion. And instead of you being basically insecure, trying to prove to yourself that you're not going to be lonely and inverted motivation, but if you can be directly motivated toward the girl that you speak to, that's seduction. That's fucking fire. And it's pretty easy to do when you just switch it around in your brain. You guys out there on the internet, you're watching this. You're like, fuck, I don't want to be lonely this weekend. The game is so confusing. Your head's in the wrong place. To quote, quote Tyler from the fucking two-hour free audio, your head is in the wrong place. <laughs> Dude, oh, you guys haven't heard that, huh? It was the old, when you like first sign up for RSD, you get Tyler's two-hour free audio. No, does anybody remember that? This is like 2004, back when I started in the game. If any single one of you guys was surprised that I walked in here as the instructor, just it's a throwback to 2004. Sorry. You're motivated by the girl, um, and she'll, she'll, it's, it's empowering just to see somebody who is motivated by someone in front of them, rather than fearing non-motivation. So, back to the point that women are only just try, uh, living to not have their heart broken. I've seen it, you fucking Scandinavian guys, and I choose my words carefully. You're so emotional. Fucking Danish guys are so emotional. Uh, Swedish guys a little bit more, they're more like fiery, passionate, emotional. But if, if you're going to meet a girl and have a one night stand, from the girl's side, it's like she doesn't want to go home alone, right? It's not that she wants to meet you, she doesn't want to go home alone. But the man is like, I, I'm so into you, this could be a great relationship, I, I think you should love me. The girl's like, fuck that, that's fucking scary, right? Because what's going to happen is she might hook up, he might get interested, he might then get disinterested, and now she's started to invest some emotions, her heart gets fucking broken, she feels fucking stupid, and the problem is when a girl feels stupid, she turns to drink, she turns to aggressive behavior, she might become more slutty when she's heartbroken, when her head is spinning, when her, when, when her soul is crushed, right? I knew a story of a girl, she uh, had her boyfriend cheat on her, and I know two girls, uh, who had their boyfriends cheated on them and they slept with like literally two guys a week, one for three months and one for a year. Like it was both fiance type situations. They just, they went from being a great girlfriend and a wife to literally fucking two guys a week until I know in both of their case, they had like injured vaginas, like actually medically injured vaginas and anuses. Like Jesus <laughs> Christ. Like that, that's how like, that's how damaging it is when a girl's heart gets broken and she goes out on the weekend because it's almost like self-destructive. It's almost like, I don't want to go home, home alone. If I'm not going to have the happiness and the love that is a sacred motivation, then I'm going to be like, fuck this. I give up. I'm just going to be crazy about it. Funny thing is, what you guys, you guys want to get laid, right? Like students, students want to meet girls and lead it to intimacy <clears throat> in different forms. But oftentimes, you're going to be getting laid because of people's inverted motivation rather than your motivation Whew. <clears throat> that's the big one there let's make it a little bit lighter young girls you know girls in their 20s and 30s all young um they they're not motivated by you they're motivated by not being boring they're motivated by not being uncool among their friends they're motivated by not being left behind in their personal and social development and they want to go out on the weekend and have a bit of fun. And if you see that, if you see there's a girl who's adventurous, experimental, open-minded, I'm going to see that as it is, except that she doesn't like me for me, that I just play a role in her, 
personal growth and life experience, cool. Then, yeah, sure, you know, you'll get intimacy. You can have intimacy. You can have a lot of fun, have adventures. And magically, magically, once the girl knows that you're someone who is a safe zone, you're a guy who's a safe zone, you're encouraging, you're forgiving, you're no expectation, maybe you really like the girl. She's really, really beautiful and she does something experimental or risky with you. And you're like, fuck, I really want to like her, but she's in a phase of her life. She's a free spirit. I can't keep her or control her. And she goes and sleeps with a guy the next week, but then she calls you to sleep with you the week after. And you know this, but if you start seeing her all the time and you're very much a safe zone and a safe zone where she can be more experimental, be more emotional, be more affectionate and open up, that's where the relationships come. That's where the brilliant relationships come. Another way to describe that is called a back-ended interaction back ended. So you meet the girl, it kind of doesn't go very well. This is a whole another subsection of this thing. Imagine you're in the bar, you meet a girl, you have a chat. She's like, yeah, fuck you. You're a player. I don't like you because you're white. You know, we're in Norway. It's a thing now. In, in Finland, it's really a thing. It's like the guys who are like white Finnish guys, they're like not cool nowadays. It's like, I only will date ethnic one. That is the cool one now. So the white, the white guys in Finland are getting like, this is, this is fucked. I remember when I started coaching in like 2007, racism was a real fucking issue for the, my Indian guys or Middle Eastern guys. Now they're like the cool guys in Scandinavia. The, uh, the exotic guys have an advantage. Go to Finland. It's a whole new, they're like, oh, you're so exotic. I, my friend will be jealous that I get to fuck, get to fuck an exotic boy. <laughs> it's, it's actually a thing. My guy's from Toronto who is Indian. He went there and he's like, dude, this is crazy. I play the exotic card. Everybody wants to jump on my dick. Back in Toronto, I'm just a brown clown. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Sumit. Sumit, mate, I'm glad. I'm glad you're having a new experience in life. Fucking great. Again, again, it's not, again, again, it's not even that it's, they're motivated by him. They want to prove that they can uh, be a little bit uh, going against the grain. This is, another, this is another fucking thing. It's like they want to do something unpredictable because it's a thrill. They want to go with the bad boy. They want to go with the exotic guy. They want to go with something unpredictable. You realize you're working with this kind of mindset, then you don't get so distressed or freaked out if things don't work smoothly or well for you. You're like, oh, she's a girl. She's a human being. Human beings, they can be motivated by whatever they want. And if they want to be a little bit antisocial or unpredictable, good for you. You know, good for you. I may or may not be involved in this process. I'd love it if I was. And I'd love it if that included intimacy or building a relationship or whatever. I'd love that. But hey, I fucking can't control that. And if you all understand that, you're not going to have an expectation which can be burst, which can upset you. And if you're not upset, then you'll love the game and you'll love women and you'll have more stamina in going out all the time, having a, a good time with chicks. <clears throat> I was talking about though, oh, I was talking about like getting laid or a different fucking thing about relationships. Where was I? It was a sub point that I was going through a second ago. Does anybody remember what it was? No. No, too many points being thrown around. No, not that. Inter uh, re in inverted motivations. You're talking about skin color, living to not having heart broken? Yeah, it was, it was more off the back of living to not have your heart broken. It was more off the back of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, the self-destruction stuff when they went out? Or? Yeah. Uh, I forget, it was another good point. Anyway, anyway I'll go into other, other points here. So, <sighs> inverted, it, more about this inverted motivation. If you, if you realize, no, nah, I think, I think that kind of makes the point. That kind, that kind of makes the point for now. Any questions about this? Any questions about what I've said so far? Any interpretations? Open to discussion. I have other stories and more points to follow with, but I want to know if what I've said has made sense so far. Yeah, Go ahead. No, it makes perfect sense, uh, but how would you like uh, this whole other, another concept in RSD, right? Like adventure, up body, pool, like uh, be a high value guy and you just like. I remember where I was fucking going with this now. Yeah. Liberation. <laughs> the liberation of you, of you. All right, the liberation of you. So if the girl is not looking 
for something she's motivated by, then you can be something funny, silly, crazy, theatrical, and unusual. In fact, let me say this clearly. If you're normal, that's what society says she should be motivated by. If you're abnormal, theatrical, and let me say, Julian Tyler Max, these guys are a great example of theatrical. Fucking Julian looks like a shaman. Tyler, Tyler looks like uh, some bearded fucking uh, porn star or something. Like, a, <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> that means that you can be, the word theatrical is a little bit crazy. Like, boom, after party, this is going to be fucking stupid. This is going to be insane. This is going to be ridiculous. It's going to be epic. The girl's like, not normal, not normal, not normal, not normal. Tick. Therefore, I can do something that's not normal, not, not grounded in reality. It's not like I'm being set up on a date. There's no expectation. I can have fun tonight and never have to speak to these people again. I can if I want to, but I'm not expected to. That is liberating. That is liberating. All right. <clears throat> on the topic of liberation, right. I spoke to you guys. I said that if you understand this, then you will be free. And what do we know about game? If you can express yourself freely, if you don't give a shit, if you're outcome non-dependent, if you're independent from outcome, uh, if you can be charismatic, if you can escalate, if you're happy to let girls walk away, if you can have a very clear and solid state all throughout the interaction, you will have good fucking game. If you walk into a bar, if you walk into a bar and you realize that any amount of good game or money or physique or the amount of drinks that you buy the girl, that doesn't equal attraction, motivation, result. It doesn't equal getting the girl. It doesn't equal that. None of it equals that. So what the fuck are you bothering for? Why are you bothering? Why, like, why do we learn about game? To understand concepts that I'm speaking about here and now. So you go into the bar and you realize that all these girls, they don't want to not get laid. <laughs> All these girls, they want to not be the ones not getting laid. It's not they walk in like, tonight I'm going to find a dick, right? Some, some do, like a small minority, but you're like, I'm in a bar. All these girls don't want to not get laid. I'm a guy. Cool. I'm, I'm, I've got every chance here. I don't even need to do anything special. The special thing that you have to do is not freak the fuck out, is not get upset, is not stress and have bad vibes that you can't control situations. Be like, these girls are free. They're on a very complicated life journey. It does include getting laid. And here I am, perfectly capable. I own a bed. You know, I own a house. I own a dick. I own a Viagra. I'm available. I'm available to help you in your life journey. And I've got a really good vibe while you do it. And I'll forgive you eternally if you're not interested in me. If you walk away from me, whatever. Ah, there's another point that comes from this. Yes, the back-end interaction. That's what I need to refer to. See, it's just, this is all off the top of my head. I don't know. I've got no fucking structure. So, you, now the, the back-end of the interaction is if you talk to the girl, and maybe, maybe you game the girl, you have a good vibe, you, you talk to her a whole lot, um, flirting, escalating, kissing on the neck, and you're, you're showing some intent and some interest, sure, <clears throat> and she's not interested, and you walk away and you do that with another girl, you make yourself openly available to anybody else, then she is going to be motivated by not losing you rather than getting you in the first place. All right, this is what I wanted to fucking talk about. Because when it comes time to the moment where the girl says in her head, it's like Inception, right? The fucking movie. <clears throat> Planting an idea in her head. When she has this idea that, oh, if I don't act on this guy now, if I don't go home with him, make out with him, give him attention, go on a date with him, I'm going to lose this guy. They are motivated by losing you rather than having you. You know what I mean? Right? Oh, I have... I don't even have any fucking money in here. Like, uh, the classic experiment. Let's make it really fucking clear. Do I have any Croatian money here? No. <laughs> Imagine if I've got like some 50 euros, 10, 20 euros. I'm like, hey, bro, do you want 20 euros? No, this is Norway. You can buy like half a drink with that. 
Do you want, uh, if I try to give away myself my 20 euros, not, not going to be many takers. It's not the right thing to do. You're like, oh, you keep it. I don't really need it. I'm not motivated by getting an extra 20 euros. If I steal 20 euros from you, people freak the fuck out. This is human fucking nature. Don't you get it? We, we got to realize that. It's the same with meeting women and everything in life. So <clears throat> that being the case, that being the case, if you go and speak to a girl in the bar, you create familiarity. This is the key and critical word. Not attraction, not engagement, not intent, not power, I don't know, whatever the fuck they call it. If you create familiarity, a safe space, a forgiving space, an encouraging space, a trolling space, a little bit of sexual banter space with the girl, then that's going really, really well. And, and you say, hey, go dance. Go speak to that guy. Hey, go scam a drink. Well done. Good for you. And then you go and speak to another girl. Ding, 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 ding. That's when the girl's freaking the fuck out. I'm, I'm going to lose that guy. Mo now she's motivated. She's like, shit, I'm going to go and keep that guy's fucking attention because he is a man who is a fucking great guy. And if I don't fucking do something, if I don't make out with him or troll him again or try to keep his attention again, she will lose you. Right? And that's the thing that lights the fucking fire under their ass that make them order an Uber and come to your house or talk to their friends. I really want to go home with that guy because if I don't, I'm going to lose him. It's not like, hey, I met a guy, checked his resume, spectacular. I'm going home with this guy. No, no, no. So in your game, what, I'm, what this means functionally, meet a girl at a party, a bar, or a text game, and you talk a lot. Going pretty cool. Pretty cool, not a lot of attraction, but a lot of back and forth. Like, yeah, it's cool, yeah, whatever, whatever. And maybe you ask for three dates or four dates. Maybe you're in a bar or a party and you say, hey, do you want to drink, drink a drink together? Hey, do you want to come and stand with me one-on-one? -on -one? Even going for the makeout, and the girl's like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's normal. Realize that that's a normal part of the process. And when she says, I'm not sure, three or four times, right? Not a hard no, because you guys shouldn't be escalating in a way that's making the girl say, no, 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 back off. You should never be so intense that you're getting hard no's on any level. Asking for the phone number, holding hands, offering a drink, you should never get a, get the fuck out of my face, it's too intense. But if you're offering, entertaining the idea, asking for a date, going for the makeout, and the girl's like, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, and then you go and speak to a different girl, or you let her go, or you basically start putting her on the bottom of your priorities, not ignoring her or cutting her out of your life, but you make her the lowest priority, then she's going to be like, fuck, I'm losing him and all those good emotions. And he's such a better guy than all of these other guys that I know. I'd better go and fucking act on that now. And that's what you're interested in is getting the girl. That's how you get the girl. My secret that I want to share with you is that if you realize that that rejection or that decline or that mild, lukewarm interest, if you realize that that's a part of the process, that you might be a great guy with money, with wealth, with two watches or whatever the fuck is cool, right? And she's like, uh, I don't know, you're a cool guy. I just, you know, I'm not feeling that crazy fire. But then you then go and run your same game on the next girl. She's like, oh shit, right? It's, a fear of, it's the fear of loss that is the big motivator. That is the actual motivator, not you. Even though I say, there's no reason you're not enough, that applies to familiarity, not attraction. There's no reason you're not enough to build interactions, to create jealousy, and then to make her jealous enough. Not Jealous is the wrong word. When you're a popular guy who can create a good vibe and encouragement and sexuality for everybody, you become a valuable and therefore scarce commodity because it's a commodity that in a monogamous culture shouldn't be is not supposed to be shared right and she's like shit i don't want to share this uh this this commodity what was your question my question was uh, i agree with the fear of loss but have you ever had like when you've gone talk to another girl she gets more defensive or she gets more like oh fuck this guy she's just just a player or the question was imagine if you try to make her defend make her jealous yeah. by speaking to other girls yeah uh, then the girl can get extra defensive because you just like basically kicked her to the curb. Yeah. You're talking to somebody else. The big, big difference is 
if you spoke to her passionately and with going for attraction yeah, and escalation, yeah. if you're going kind of intense on your interaction and then you're like, oh, next, mm. and to the next one, that's you being very gamey, very intentful, sure. right? The difference is the way that I would do this is very open, very encouraging, very reassuring, very admiring. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not asking for compliance and I'm not making this like, hey, this is about you and me. Exactly. No, no. That's so the, that, not rejecting or just talking to somebody else. That's right. I'm friends with everybody in the yeah. bar. I might give her some extra words of encouragement. Yeah, not uh, woman. And, yeah. Not man to woman. That's an RSD concept I, that I don't like at all, yeah. right? Man to woman's like, hey, this uh, is on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I might be really, really relaxed and I'm like... I might show that I can do the sexual stuff and say, you know what? If I dated you, my dad would think that I'm a fucking sex god. So I, I can show that I can do man to woman stuff yeah. without man to woman guess, yeah. with the girl. Yeah. So then I'll go, you know, I'll go from this girl here and I'll do the kind of the takeaway, the jealousy. I'm a valuable commodity um, that is only supposed to be shared on one person, not shared with everybody. And my, the valuable commodity comes over here. But I'm going to be like, hey, what's going on? I encourage you now. I admire you. Troll you a little bit. Very, very wide open. I'm really, we're really not trying to escalate anything until we leave the club anyway. So that way it's far more chill. And it's, very, it's really, really good because it's almost like if you go around and have that kind of conversation with a combination of girls, it all spirals up positively, right? Say, for example, real, realistically, if I go to a bar... And I'm 34 as of today. Happy birthday, me. Happy well, birthday, yeah, yesterday. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yesterday. Um, and I speak to four lovely girls, right? The same kind of way. I show that I can do escalation. That's called, physic, uh, it's called a physical expression. I show that I can do physical expression. I've got physical, uh, physical rapport. Um, I show that I can use a range of emotions and I can encourage everybody. Of the four different individual girls that I spoke to, the odds are that only one of them or zero of them are logistically available. Odds are boyfriend or lives in a different town or friends are going to block her or her work is too hectic or she's going traveling to Asia for three months tomorrow. Who knows? Who knows? So realistically, when you go into the bar, you should make yourself available to everybody. And on the four-week natural, one of the first things that we're going to talk about is knowing how to get the fuck out of the set quickly. If you want to get laid five times more, get the fuck out of the set. If you go to the bar, there's five different girls, and you start with the first one, you're like, oh, this is going really, really well. But she had a boyfriend, or she's a transvestite, or she's a lesbian, like legitimately. And you're like stuck with her all night, complete dead end. What you hear me is like, get the fuck out of set, come on. And then you've got to make yourself known amongst others, both for creating scarcity of the, the valuable entity, um, and also creating more options, right? So a lot of us guys, we're motivated by not feeling uncomfortable by leaving the first interaction, right? So you have the first interaction. It's so comfortable. It's so happy. But it's a fucking dead end from the very, very beginning. You need to step away and then talk to some other people. And by the wet floor point, you need to have decided on that one interaction and stick with it for the entire night. That's more of a logistical conversation rather than a uh, in a game concept. We'll talk a little bit more about negative motivation, but any questions about inverted motivation as I flesh out this idea? Go ahead, mate. Um, about what you just said, like, but realistically say, speaking, like, if you're in a club and then you do this kind of stuff, you bounce like from girl to girl, like, there are also other guys who do game, right? Mm. When you leave the girl, let's say you talk to the hottest one, then you leave her, mm. and then there's another guy going in, and he does the set, and then another guy, and it works with them, you know? And you had, like, a solid conversation from the beginning. Isn't it, like, counterproductive to leave the set? It is. It, well, it's up to a certain point. <clears throat> there's a point in every bar called the wet floor point, when people are drunk enough to start spilling drinks, and that's usually the time when every guy thinks that he can approach any fucking girl. So there's two different periods. The, the re realistic point and then the party point, like later. Yeah. When the floor starts looking wet, that's when you need to have made the decision. 
The advantage that this kind of game has is two. We are gaming in a way that makes the girl wonder what's happening and we create a lot of options. The other guys who do a lot of game, they are too linear and too predictable. So yes, the girl will like the attention from a guy who wants to fuck her, uh, who wants to keep her attention, wants to entertain her. It'll look really good and she'll show a lot of encouragement and a lot of encouragement, but then not want to go home with him because it's so predictable. It's so straightforward and predictable. Never say never. There's always, you know, uh, alternatives or th there's, it's not always, always the case, but n most of the time it is. Um, and then you're the kind of guy who's like willing to let her go, but you're still her friend while she speaks to some guy who's aggressively gaming her. Oh, hey, hey, bro, what's going on? Oh, yeah, getting, getting a bit of action here tonight. Cool. Yeah. Well, good luck to you both. You go stand over here, get a drink, look over his shoulder at her face. Be like, this is awkward. That's so, he's being so creepy. You know, some guys who game, like they're desperate to get a result versus, ah, everyone loves me. I can definitely stay in the interaction of the one that I choose and I'm going to be present and encouraging and open to everybody. Whereas the really gamey type of guys, they're going to be more like, choose me, validate me, agree to me, show me the fucking green light. Our secret advantage is the front door rule. We always know to leave at the right time without any green light. Talk, that's more about logistics. We talk a lot about that on the, uh, on the program. And also I did a, a video like two or three weeks ago called The 17 Steps of Night Game, which talks all about that, yeah. So back on reverse motivations. A little bit more about the girls. Even with your dating life, I'll get to both your questions in a second. Girls, oh, the fucking unicorn. Okay, another little idea in my brain. Everybody is only motivated by their unicorn partner or girl or guy, right? So you, you all have an idea in your head of the one type of girl that would motivate you. Is, is that right? You've got your perfect girl in your head. And even if you saw her, maybe you would go up to her and approach her or not. I saw my perfect girl twice. Both times I chased them until the end. One time she got a different boyfriend, didn't work out, but I kissed her before. And the other time I got the girl, right? My unicorn girl, these redhead babe model girls I love. But we, if you're not going to get your unicorn, which is a fucking figment of your imagination, I'm speaking both to women and men right now. If you're not going to get the unicorn, and she might think it's like a 34-year-old guy with a job, with a suit, with a chiseled jaw. So this unicorn is not going to happen. But I'm motivated by not dying alone. So I'm going to give a different kind of guy a chance. And that is a beautiful thing. I look at all you guys in the room, long hair, short hair, French, German, Scandinavian, Polish, uh, Kosovovian. Is that the... <laughs> How... We don't know. It's, it's, it's barely country. It's barely country. Kosovan. Kosovan, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All different types of guys. And the girl is going to think, fuck. A guy that I didn't expect, right? A guy that I didn't expect, or I didn't know if I would be interested in him, I'm going to give him a chance. Uh, and when you realize that she's giving you a chance and you let her relax and, and relax around you instead of you coming in like a thousand percent, trying to game her, trying to make her like you. She's, she's proving something really cool to herself that, okay, I'm not getting what I'm motivated by. I'm going for the alternative, something that I'm not motivated by, right? Could be a Polish guy or an Asian guy or a Kosovan guy or a French guy or a Swedish guy. None is better or worse than the rest. You're all just different, but imperfect in her unicorn brain. But it's really, really cool if she's decided that she's not going to go for the perfect guy. She's sitting there with a Polish guy, and she's like, I'm beginning to see the value in a Polish guy or this man who happens to be Polish, whatever your name might be or whatever your lifestyle might be. <clears throat> but if you're over gaming and like shoving your personality down her throat and being too intense, she doesn't have a chance to relax and open up and interpret the situation on her terms. She's like, fuck, I'm so proud of myself. I let him in, I opened up, I'm so empowered that I can connect with new people. 
this is a different type of process as well. But beware, be, like remember that in that process, she's not motivated by you as an individual. She's motivated by the fact that she can open up, right? And then once she does open up and hook up with you, then the connection is really, really good. Once maybe, you know, you all know the time when you sleep with a girl, once or twice, you start eating together, having breakfast together, hanging out together. Then you're really motivated by catching up with somebody who you're starting to get to know. Then it happens, okay? So very rarely, even, even you guys, you might try to be learning game, get laid more this year, you know, hook up more, show that you're not a loner, and you start sleeping with a girl, and then all of a sudden, you're like, fuck, this girl's cool. I really like this girl. I'm getting to know her. I'm really excited. I'm motivated by getting to know her. I'm asking you to understand human nature so that you're less confused, <clears throat> less hard on yourself, and less distressed about the whole fucking situation so that, yeah, you can have more abundance with women. You can get laid more and have more abundance. That is what this is all about. You two had questions. Yeah, I was uh, asking about uh, how does this pass into the day game uh, side, like where you don't have the opportunity to be like this. Mm -hmm. With day game, we, we assume social media with day game. So we meet the girl and we say, uh, do you have Instagram or WhatsApp? Whatever you collect with the girl during day game, whatever you collect with the girl during day game, if you get the WhatsApp, then you text, do you have Instagram? If you get the Instagram, text, do you have WhatsApp? That kind of thing. And then with that, with that, you would start to either tele televise yourself into her life with stories, Snapchat or Instagram, <clears throat> or you know, if you meet the girl, and uh, it's pretty cool. She's single, you're single. Uh, you're in the same demographic. You're mildly interested in each other. She didn't expect to fall in love that day, but you know, you made her laugh. You were ballsy enough to do the approach. You, as a guy, dealt with and overcame the awkwardness of the awkward approach. And she's like, yeah, he deserves a chance. He's not my unicorn. He's not my dream guy. In fact, I still love my ex. She still loves her ex. But she's like, you know what? It's better than having a shit dating life, living alone with my fucking cat at the age of 27. At least if I follow my motivation of not wanting to stay home and have a, her motivation of not wanting to have a shitty dating life, she goes on the date with you. She's like, eh, I don't even really care about this guy that much. But it's in human nature to become familiar with who's in front of you. And familiarity, if you're familiar with a girl, they relax. If a girl's familiar with a guy, the guy relaxes, have a drink. You're like, this is fun. We're beginning to like each other. Maybe we could be naughty together, hook up, whatever. So the familiar, familiarity comes from texting back and forth, inviting her to hang out with you and your friends, finding out what's going on sending a photo of your dog, sending a photo of your dinner, sending a photo of your drinks, your haircut, whatever. You can get into her mindset that way. And when she texts, maybe she's at the gym, encourage her. Maybe she's wearing some, some high heels, sexualize it. Maybe she says something goofy, troll her. The trinity, trolling, encouraging, sexualizing. Um, that will, uh, you know, it'll show that you're in, in game mindset. And then, for example, if you're, uh, if you're doing this, for seven or eight days, maybe 10 days, maybe it was a Tinder date, a Tinder connection as well, and you don't have a chance to meet her, but you've been texting and interacting solid, not seeking approval, not needing to meet up with her, but having really solid back and forth, a bit of banter, just opening up and sharing, and then all of a sudden, you go blank. You stop responding to her texts, um, you seem disinterested, and the girl's not giving you a chance so you're going out and creating chances with other girls. That's when she's like, oh shit, he stopped texting. Girlfriends, girlfriends, like Sex in the City style. This guy stopped fucking texting. I, I, I wasn't that motivated to meet him, but fuck, what should I do? She's like, go and see him. Propose a fucking meetup. You need to investigate this further. He's obviously emotionally affecting you. And, and I don't want to use this expression, but you got into her brain, you got into her heart, and human beings are loving creatures. Women are particularly loving creatures, affectionate, understanding, sympathetic creatures. So that's how you would do it during day game. Yeah, I've done it, especially with Tinder. It works really, really well on Tinder. The takeaway effect after a bit of back and forth after seven or eight days or whatever, especially with Instagram stories, works brilliantly.
Cool. What was your question? Uh, off topic or on topic? <laughs> on topic would be good uh, for now. Good. Off topic, we can ask a little bit later. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, but yeah. I'd be like, uh, your floating, floating around kind of game is, is kind of in of in it of itself, kind of lowering defense, if you will. And absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. And I see that. Really see that. But could you touch in maybe on like this slot defense or afraid to being like mm. seeing the guy and. Maybe yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. So, especially if you, if you see me in field or the infield videos that I show you on the uh, the forward natural, um, I'll really be very good at speaking to the entire group. Yeah. I'll never ever speak to one individual yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah, never isolate, <laughs> right? Uh, so if I speak to one individual girl, the group will get defensive and she will get defensive as well. So I all, I want to create a situation where the group of them they don't really know who I like but I'm giving all of them a fair chance, I'm encouraging them, I'm trolling, I'm being sexual. Um, and I will show, I'm being very chill, very relaxed, but then I'm like, oh, you graduated two years ago, congratulations, boom, pick her up, well done. Like, look at your hair, your hair's so fucking amazing, oh my God. So I'll show that I can be charismatic and sexual and physical, but then I'm, my, my status quo is just chilling, just chilling, relaxing, whatever, yeah. So that, that works quite well. Um, the slut defense, and some girls will just say things like, we're lesbians, you're just trying to pick us up. And I'll say, you say that to every single guy, and if you say, you're only saying that because you're assuming that everyone wants to fuck you because you're hot. Mm. Who said you're hot? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? <laughs> so just, just for the record, like if a girl says like, you're just, trying, you're just trying to pick me up, you say that to every girl. I'm like, you know, how do I, like, <laughs> You say, say that to me. I'm like, uh, can I, uh, hey, what's going on? You're very nice. You've got a nice accent. Can I offer you a drink? You're just trying to pick me up. You say that to every guy. Girl. <laughs> every girl. Every girl. <laughs> you say that to every girl. Pick you up. You're running on the assumption that you're so aesthetically attractive that every man in this bar wants to sleep with you. I never said you're attractive. Would you like to buy me a drink? Just joking. I think you're a fucking baby. You shouldn't run on the assumption that everyone wants to fuck you. I mean, a lot of guys like to have sex, but I was looking at you from here up. I mean, I just want to have sex with that part of you. Not the Just joking. Can I buy you a drink? Like, yeah. how arrogant you must be to think that everybody wants to fuck you all the time with these outlandish statements. I would, I would say something like that. Actually, it's, to be honest, to be honest, my, my face when I talk to girls in a bar it, it, I, I look like I'm smart and I look like I'm ready for a fucking battle. So I don't really get so many tests, but I want more tests because I can just like blow, blow them up. Yeah. And the good thing is also in Europe, people can understand English at full speed, but they can't speak English at full speed. So I can always win the argument, which, which is a huge, <laughs> huge advantage. All right. Any more questions about reverse motivation? This is my first offering of the idea, inverted motivation. Any more questions about it? Because this is, I'll, con I'll answer the questions and then I'll conclude it and then I'll go off to, onto some other topics. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's um, like basically a little bit generalizing, of course, because some girls are different at different points, but is it state dependent at all? Like, uh, Be more specific. The question was, is inverted motivation state dependent? Yeah. Can it shift in different environments? Like if they're out in night game, yeah. like more conditioning and more pressure for a girl? Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, I, think, yeah. I think sales is a pretty uh, universal concept. If you're a salesman and you need to sell something to get money, or a hunter and you need to kill something to get fed, right? State dependent. If a girl hasn't got laid for a long time, or if she's got rejected by a couple of guys she really likes, or she's very fragile because she's uncomfortable in a situation, that almost, almost desperation or fragileness or um, a lack of self-confidence, like, uh, what do the girls say? It? They must say like low self-esteem or really wavering confidence because they're out of control of the situation. The more hungry you are or the less time, the longer that you've gone without making a sale, the more intense or desperate or fired up you might be. So that, that's kind of like a desperation state, but you're talking more about energy state, right? This is a good question, by the way. <clears throat> the energy state, if the girl's in a really, really good state, she's actually gonna feel quite empowered 
by her friends, by the energy, by the validation, by the confidence. And here's what will happen. She'll get pumped up, pumped up, pumped up. Loves the music, loves her friends, loves the attention from guys. A couple of drinks, life's, life's good. But then what can happen? Well, then actually she can just be on a high and act on the high. Act on the high. So the state dependent for the girl. Imagine like she's gone into the nighttime. And she's like, fuck, I don't get enough attention from guys. My friends think that I'm boring. Um, I didn't get the guy that I really, really liked two weeks ago. But that, that, that's her like pre-existing mindset. Then she gets hyped up, drinks, dancing friends, energy. And she's like, fuck, I do know that I came into tonight scared with scarcity. But I am in a really, really good mood. And, but here's a really nice guy. Let's do it. Yeah, so you could say buying temperature, yeah, for, exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, yeah. And even then, I see all the time, we had this guy on the program in Croatia, on the Forward National in Croatia. This guy, he has his own business, he travels, he's ripped, he's got abs, he's a very good looking Dutch guy. And he was very, very good at implementing what I asked, asked him to do. He was almost robotic in understanding what I said and doing it and getting results. And he would present himself in day game. I, I, we, did, we did a makeover, beard, hair, clothes. He bought like 250 euro board shorts, really fucking cool. And he'd present, present himself to these girls. And the girls were like, oh my God, you're everything that my mind says that I should like and that my heart and my reproductive organs are attracted to. But he was so good and he's just like giving himself to these girls. He was also creating a little bit of jealousy. The girls always had to wait one day or two days to hook up with him. And the ones, he did get, like, I think he got two one night stands, but the girls always made him wait until after sunrise, right? Just to prove something to themselves that they're not going to do it that easily or not be convinced or seduced that easily. So, something like that, yeah. Any, yeah, any other questions on inverted motivation? I'm getting some fucking hay fever. Ah! Just as well with the uh, high value girls, so what to call it, like uh, if they already are very confident and they're used to guys you know, trying to pick them up and everything. Right, right, right. Okay, so that, that's the question. Does this also work with higher value girls, girls with uh, status, girls who are like kind of on a pedestal? It works with even more volatility. Right. So I'm a pretty so socially and societally, I'm a relatively high status guy and I really feel at home with high status girls. I've got hundreds of thousands of people on Instagram. I'm a talented like, photo fashion photographer. I have great fucking game and I dress well. Like, I try to stay in shape, but you know. You know, Croatia with holidays, whatever. And I'll go and speak to the girl, high value guy speaking to the girl. And my students, my students are nearby. My students might be stressed, uh, introverted, uh, lacking in confidence and things like that. I'm gaming the girl, having a good time, getting everybody involved, uh, life's good, but I don't want to party and drink and stay up and lose sleep and miss days at the gym. So I'll talk to the girl, have a really, really good time, and then I'll be like, take away. I'm like, hey, nice to meet you, kiss you, goodbye, and then I'm like, I literally have an electric skateboard and I skate away from the club, right? I have it here in Norway as well because I drove. And what happens is the girl feels so rejected. I, I don't want to say rejected, but deflated and like, shit, I'm so turned on. I like this guy, but he just left me. He just left me for no reason. And then she turns to the right and sees Ivan, my student from Croatia. He's Croatian in Croatia. He's like, and Ivan's like, come here with me kind of like a buying t temperature transfer. So she's like, shit, I got rejected by a guy, again, who I liked, who was cool, who had a cool life, and he just rejected me, and I'm in a really, really good state. <sighs> Somebody catch me, that, that kind of thing. So at more average guys can hook up with hotter girls because the, the guys, the hottest girls, the high status girls are chasing <clears throat> can reject them, turn them away, be, get over them, be pissed off by them or whatever. So then the really, really hot girl is going to be like, fine, if that trust fund guy with a Porsche 
and a house in Ibiza is not gonna like me, I'm gonna do something unpredictable. I'm gonna date a geeky boy. I'm gonna date an artist. I'm gonna date an immigrant type guy. Not a negative connotation, but an alternative type of guy, right? So yes, yes, it can work. And I often see, I see it all the time as well, because we have inexperienced, socially inexperienced students approaching really, really hot girls, and they are trying to make their guys jealous, but also they have like heartache because they're not getting the unicorn guys that they want. These are guys who are like born into really, really wealthy families, or they might be really successful doctors, lawyers, high status guys. So that can trigger it. And then a really, really high status girl can find herself in bed with, hooking up with or dating an average guy, an average guy, not the unicorn, but being with the average guy with like a dad bod or kind of clumsy or goofy, she feels like she will never fuck up. She has no fear of loss. So she's motivated. She, she has no fear of loss. So she's motivated by the comfort zone. Yeah. <laughs> Think about like Homer Simpson, Peter Griffin with the hot wives kind of thing. That, that kind of thing. Yeah, g really, really good question. I'm, gl I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. You never fucking know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, any other questions on inverted motivation? I really like this concept and I'm really glad to start describing it both to the world and for, for the mastermind program, I'll refine it even better and present it again. Yeah. What how does that mean in your, what's your state of mind or what's your focus on when you go out just to have fun and just to socialize? Or, yeah. No reason I'm not enough. Yeah. Four times rule, front door rule and screen so I can figure out who the fuck is available. Yeah. Right. So I'm thinking there's no reason I'm not enough. Talk to everybody, make myself a valued and scarce commodity, show everybody that I am capable of being emotional and be very fucking clever about who is single that I want to walk out of the venue with at the same time. So I make that decision. By the wet floor point, I decide there's that girl there, her name is Marlin or Tonya or what's another fucking Norwegian name? Mm -hmm. Some, what is that? Emilia. Emilia, Emilia, <laughs> yeah, Emilia. And, uh, <laughs> and then what I'll do is I'll get Emilia is the, is the one. I'm going to encourage her. I'm going to let her walk away like five times and reapproach. I will offer her a drink, but I probably won't buy the drink. Uh, I'll escalate. I'll include all of her friends. Uh, and then I'll act like I'm not interested, but I'll always be in proximity. And I'll make her jealous by talking to other girls. Yeah. I'll bring in other random guys to meet her. I'll create a lot of hype. But then I'll, I will also be her safe space. So it's very indirect. But with, within the indirectness, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll also be doing all the game actions. Sure, sure. And then yeah. when the club is closing and the guys are getting fucking creepy, yeah. I'm like, come with me if you want to not be fucked by some random dude. Yeah. I'll get you to the Uber. I'll get you to the after party. I'll get you to the pizza. I'm fucking, I'm, knight in, I'm the knight in shining armor. Come with me. And it's not like, it's more like I'm protecting her, but I can, when it comes time, I'm a man with a plan. You guys will learn that on Four Week Natural Man with a Plan at the front door. Take her by the hand. Take her friend by the hand. Take the gay guy by the hand. Whoever the fuck. Come on, guys. I'll take care of you. Fuck off all you fucking no horny Norwegians. Relax. Get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my, my mindset. I love it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what we will do, I, we eventually have to wrap this up. I just need to tell you when after this after i wrap this up and we have to vacate the room um we can go downstairs and ask more questions there if you want to get a drink i'll need to get some orange juice after this but are any of you well i should tell you now about what i've come here to do the four week natural have you guys anybody not fully understand what the four week natural is not heard about it with game with pickup the way that people have traditionally taught pickup is you pay three thousand dollars for three days, three hours on Friday, three hours on Saturday, three hour conversation on Sunday afternoon. With Derek, 13 students, five or seven assistants, and Derek and his girlfriend sitting over there in the corner. Have, have you done a Derek bootcamp? Yeah. Thir and it's, it's, and I believe uh, they're doing it that way because they, they want to kind of make the most of the money of the industry before they, they go out of it. So traditionally you pay $3,000 for three days. But I thought, hold on, that doesn't make any, that, that's not a good way for a student to, to grow and get good in game. When I had assistants that would come from far and wide 
to help me for you know a month or two months, a Euro trip, an American trip. And what I magically noticed with my assistants is they would just get good with girls after about two weeks. After about two weeks, they magically just got good. They didn't give a fuck. They go for the girls they want. They persisted a little bit. And as hard as I tried with any student, I really couldn't make them change their life quicker than 10 days. Because everybody has to go through a process. People don't like change. Emotionally, we reject change. Has anybody ever tried to stick to a new diet or a training plan or quit smoking? Pretty fucking hard to do. To change your life, you need to come to a critical point and you're working really hard to quit smoking or go to the gym or stick to the diet. And when you get to that real life change point, it's at that point you freak the fuck out and you want to go backwards, right? That could be like approaching hot girls, overcoming approach anxiety, um, playing to win with the girls you meet, not being the kind of guy who just plays to not lose. Uh, but it's at that critical point at about two weeks where you need a father, a mentor, a coach, or a trainer to say, stay on course, you fucking got this. And it's funny because some students are like, they're getting results, they're getting laid, and they're going from an identity of scarcity into an identity of abundance, and they, their body rejects it. Their body rejects it. Imagine on a three-day boot camp what we used to do. It's like, yay, we're in a club together, yay, we're all fucking having a good time. See ya. I'm gone. Next, next boot camp. Yay. And then actually RSD got the money, not me. So what I thought is, what if instead of me having four weekends of three students, what if I had one month with nine students? The really critical thing for any student to change your fucking life is to get to that. It's about a 12 day point where you start to face your own personal demons, your fears, your reality shift. Some of you here in this room have scarcity with women, have fe social fears. And all of a sudden, the first 10 days, you're having fun, you're getting success, you're loving going out, but then you have to change your identity and all of your relationships with everyone you know if you change into abundance. You'll fucking lose your mind. And that's when I, the pilot of the program, the mentor, it's like me being the captain going through turbulence. You're freaking the fuck out. You're like, Alex, I don't understand this. I feel fucking bad. This girl fucking likes me. This girl's been... Uh, my job at that time is to say, you're on the right track. You've got this. We're going to go out again. You're going to try different exercises. You're going to remember these things. I'm going to be tapping you on the fucking shoulder and say, remember this. Remember that. Don't be unaccountable. Front door rule time is now. Let's go. Who are you going to take? So my job is to get you over that hump and it's kind of funny because every student is like, <laughs> at that time. On the first week of the program, I know you guys are registered. It's like, yay, new friends, new activities, so many lessons. And then you get really good at some things, but it reveals the plateau. It reveals the things that we have to focus on for you to change for the better forever. And I'll present it to you, and it's a bit of a fight. We call the second phase the dark age where you have to face your real fears, your real blind spots, the things that freak you out. My job is to drill you, give you the right exercises, and a lot of reassurances to make the transition from one place to another. But then, you get it. It's called the enlightenment. The third phase is called the enlightenment, where you get self-acceptance. You're like, fuck, my emotions are crazy, I accept. Human beings are fucking crazy. Fair enough. <laughs> the world is crazy. I get it, right? And all of a sudden, you've got all the skills and none of the concern. And that's like, you can go out, you don't give a shit. Like, oh, I can talk to her, I can talk to her. I know what to do, what to say, what to include, when to step away, when to come back. And it's really nice because during the enlightenment phase, the last probably 10 days of the program, day 23 to day 33, <clears throat> you can use your skills with me helping you to fine tune the skills. Your, your emotions in the right place, your experience is rich, you've got a momentum, you've already, you've already faced your fear, beaten it, and you feel victorious, right? You know what a bar mitzvah is? It's like you getting permission from your family that you're a man, that you can talk to girls differently. This is doing the program, 
you're proving to yourself that you can face your approach anxiety, your complexities, that you, you're allowed to have a sense of entitlement for hot girls. You get to prove to yourself, I'm allowed to speak to hot girls and be comfortable with it. And then once you get to that stage, you can have fun implementing the skills and we can talk to each other like we're doing, that we're on the same page. You're trained and you're executing, and we can do it really well. The good thing is as well, you're gonna see some of the other guys who've already finished the program here in Norway, they're gonna come and join and I can just speak to them and they know exactly what to do when and how. The good thing is for you guys who do the four-week natural, you're always welcome on future four-week naturals anywhere in the world. So if I'm doing a program next month in London, you can come, join in. Obviously, I'll coach the students, but because I've already trained you here in Norway, I'm like, dude, what's your decision? Did you include her friends? Have you made her jealous? Did you do in-game game? Sexy girl dance time. Make sure you're a man with the fucking plan. Where are you going? It's like, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Cool, well done. Include the student, All right? And you're already trained on what to do. It's, it's fucking beautiful. The guys came to Croatia. One guy from Melbourne came. One guy from Munich came. Uh, two others came as well. And it was, just, it was a brilliant party. The community is really, really good. In terms of scheduling, <clears throat> eight day game sessions, eight night game sessions, and eight bonus sessions, we have at least 23 or 24 days of contact. And that's either going to be, for example, Friday night. One, there's nine students on the program maximum. Right now, we have about four signed up and three that are interested. But I might go out with three students Friday night. We go hard. We go all the way to the end of the night. We go to the point of the no return. Then, the next day, we three sit down together. We do a big debrief. We go over everything. And that's where we learn a lot of lessons about what happened and why, what you need to do better, what you personally need to work on, what you need to personally work on. And then also all of your procedures. So a lot of the learning is done in debrief <clears throat> at different cafes, restaurants, or uh, some offices that we get sometimes. Then after that, we do a day game session. So we're always back in the two together. So that would be a Friday night. Then I would have you, maybe two other guys, a different group. So usually we have three groups of three, but sometimes we change up the groups as the program goes on. Then we go out on a Saturday night and you three guys are welcome to go to the bar, relax, but I'm always at arm's length to answer questions, to remind you of things, to give you dares, to give you ideas. And I'm on the job with these three motherfuckers. I'm like, boys, let's go. Do this, do that. Remember, this is your drills for tonight. Pre-brief, execute, all the way to the point of no return. And what's really nice, you know, if, you, if you've got somebody around that you trust, it's very empowering. So I'm here, you, you guys will be stressed when I'm on your, on your case. It's like, fuck, okay, I love the coaching, but whew, I've got to fucking switch on today. And you guys are there, like, sipping a drink, like, ah, motherfuckers, you got some stress over there. But I'm in the club with you as well, encouraging you on a lighter level, and that's really important. So, as I said, an RSD boot camp, you pay like $3,000 for three nights. In this case, you have four weeks times three nights. I'll focus on you in night game, as I said, about six to eight times. Usually we double up nights. Uh, like some nights don't work out, so we do them again, so you get bonus nights. Um, yeah, you get three weeks of three nights and then day game as well. And then what's really important is early on in the program, we do a fashion makeover. I do uh, photog uh, photos of all of you guys. We do three photo sessions. I put them into your Tinder, your Bumble and your Hinge. And then once we get that going, you start doing a day game, you're getting numbers. I can work with all of your text threads, all six to nine of you, all throughout the program and manage it as well. That's really important because text game is a whole mindset. And as we will sit down, for example, and you're showing me like, Alex, this girl sent me this. He, mate, this is what I would send and here's why. We can, I can kind of meld that into your mind over the course of the entire month. So you get what to do with text game. What's brilliant as well, when we did three students at a time, you'd only learn from two other students. But when we have nine students, it's more likely you're gonna find a couple of really like-minded guys in the group, but you can also cross-reference the other students and learn from opposites, learn from like-minded guys. And it's really, really good because with a big group think, we all get into the momentum of it quicker. If you, see, if you see one guy get a result really quick, you're like, fuck, 
it's possible that that guy got laid or did something really crazy or overcame an obstacle. Fuck, I can do that as well. A good kind of competitive team spirit. So that's, that's what it is. It's me as your personal fucking concierge. Everybody in this world wants to have abundance with women. You want to not have stress about your dating life. You want to make sense of your Tinder game, your Instagram game. And that's my fucking job. That's all that I've done since 2000 and what year? Uh, 2007. And since I uh, came into Four Week Natural, that was 2015. And I live for two things. Photography, which is my passion that balances me out. And then coaching, which is, uh, which is uh, as you can see, I'm passionate about it. I love my life and my lifestyle and my job. It's fucking cool. And uh, I kind of came back from a two-year re-planning of my life. And now I've got everything really where I want it, so I'm feeling good. I guess you guys want to know the price of it. It's an $800 deposit um, and a $3,000 payment. And it starts on the 23rd of August. So if any of you guys have any questions about that, nine days to ask the questions goes for 33 days. And it's actually designed for people who work or go to school. So if you do, you know, if you do go, precisely, yeah, right. So if you do go to school, I know you put the deposit down yesterday. I was behind the wheel all day. I'm going to find out, okay, so you've got Thursday free, Friday free, Sunday's booked. If you have a busy schedule, like a nine to five kind of job, it's my job to go to your schedule. That's the whole, that's the whole idea. Uh, and a lot of students will like fly in from Germany or Australia or the United States because they want to have a Norwegian adventure. But the whole idea was that you're living your real life and I can build into your real life. I mean, that's the whole idea. Todd does a great program, 10 days, energy, hype, intensity, drills. But the critical thing that's gonna change your fucking life forever is when we get to day 12 and you're like, fuck, I have these fears, these insecurities, what does it all fucking mean? And I'm there on hand for that seven or eight day period. That's the turbulence and that's my special skill uh, that no other coach is really willing to do. And how I discovered it in the first place was my interns. When I had interns with me, first 10 days were fun, then they had a fucking freak out, then all of a sudden they're like, I don't need to freak out. It's my job to show girls a good time and to remember the logistics. Any other questions about how we run Four Week Natural? Any, any questions about it? Like, have you got all the details? <laughs> yeah, if you guys do have any, like if you do want to register, I believe, as I said, there's four registered, three that are in negotiations, and likely, in my experience, we usually have three sign up in the last five days. Somebody's going to be sitting at home in Trundheim or Berlin, and they're like, fuck, 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 fuck. Alex, are there any spots left? That, that kind of thing. It always happens that way. Again, people motivated by missing the opportunity, you know, missing one of the positions in, in Oslo <clears throat> uh, before I go back to Australia and for, for seven months, Australia, America, and Asia. They're worried about missing the opportunity and living another year of frustration. Yeah. Anyway, any other questions about the four-week natural starting on the 23rd of August? We can have conversations like tonight's conversation four or five days of the week. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's all in here. I just tell it to you. 